Greetings citizens of the world, this is Anonymous. Today, we bring your attention to a matter that has flown under the radar, quite literally. Recent trials have shown scientists using genetically modified mosquitoes to deliver live, weakened parasites as a method of vaccination. They describe this as using thousands of flying syringes. While innovation in science is to be respected, we must question the consequences of such unchecked experimentation. The idea of releasing genetically altered insects into the environment, without knowing the long-term effects, is deeply troubling. What happens when these altered life forms interact with natural ecosystems? What if they reach individuals who never gave their consent? The right to choose what enters our bodies must never be bypassed, especially not by insects. We do not oppose scientific progress, but we reject secrecy, manipulation, and the silent normalization of invasive technologies. Ask questions, demand transparency, refuse to be kept in the dark. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Although it sounds like something from a movie, the claims from Anonymous are factual, and scientists have revealed that they plan on using mosquitoes like flying syringes and said they will start administering crucial malaria vaccines. In an unconventional clinical trial, researchers explored a bold new method of delivering this medicine using live mosquitoes. Participants in the study had their forearms inserted into mesh-covered containers holding approximately 200 mosquitoes each. The idea may sound like something out of a science fiction story, but it was conducted in the name of medical innovation, specifically the fight against malaria. Though the outcome showed promising results in the realm of immunity, it also highlighted the physical intensity of the experience. One participant, for example, developed red, raised blisters across their entire forearm, likened to chemical burns. Despite the discomfort, the implications of the experiment could signal a major shift in how medicine is delivered in the future. The striking images captured during the trial and published alongside the NPR report illustrate more than just physical reactions. They reflect the blend of scientific creativity and human resilience in the pursuit of better healthcare. These photographs, while difficult for some to view, represent an effort to revolutionize an age-old challenge, developing a highly effective malaria treatment. Malaria continues to affect millions worldwide, and current options have shown limited protection. As such, the trial's unconventional methods have drawn both attention and admiration from the medical community. The experiment was the result of collaboration between experts at the Seattle Children's Research Institute, the National Institutes of Health, and other academic institutions. Their findings were published in the esteemed journal Science Translational Medicine on the 24th of August. The study's lead author, Dr. Sean Murphy, a physician and scientist from the University of Washington in Seattle, explained the rationale behind the unusual delivery method. Instead of using traditional needles and syringes, the researchers allowed mosquitoes to act as tiny flying injectors, each one carrying a genetically modified strain of the malaria-causing plasmodium parasite. This parasite, which typically causes malaria, was altered to weaken its ability to cause full infection, while still triggering an immune response in the human body. Dr. Murphy described this approach as both practical and cost-effective during the early stages of this development. Creating a formulation suitable for injection can be complex and expensive, especially when working with live organisms such as parasites. Since these parasites naturally develop inside mosquitoes, allowing the insects to deliver them directly made sense for a proof-of-concept study. The trial involved 26 participants, and though the sample size was small, the results were noteworthy. A number of individuals in the trial developed temporary immunity to malaria following exposure, lasting for several months. The data suggested that the genetically modified parasite could indeed protect against infection, at least for a short period, by helping the immune system recognize and respond to the disease. Though the side effects, including skin irritation, were considerable in some cases, the overall potential of the method left researchers encouraged. Dr. Murphy and his colleagues consider the use of a live, genetically modified parasite to be a potential game-changer in the field of infectious disease. While this mosquito-based delivery system is not intended for widespread use, it serves as an essential step toward developing a more accessible and effective malaria treatment. 
Currently, the only approved malaria treatment is the RTS, which is developed by GlaxoSmithKline. Endorsed by the World Health Organization in the previous year, it represents a historic achievement in the global health community. However, its effectiveness is limited, with success rates falling between 30 and 40 percent. In regions where malaria is endemic, this level of protection, though helpful, is far from ideal. By contrast, the early results from the mosquito-based trial suggest the possibility of achieving far higher immunity rates with future formulations. What makes this research particularly compelling is its potential to reshape how treatment and development is approached. Traditional methods often focus on using inactivated viruses or isolated proteins to trigger immune responses. In this case, scientists are going straight to the source by introducing live organisms that are specifically designed to challenge the body just enough to build resistance. However, it is important to emphasize that the study is still in its early stages. While the recent clinical trial involving genetically modified mosquitoes as medical delivery systems has sparked excitement for its potential to revolutionize medicine, it also raises a number of critical concerns that cannot be overlooked. As with any scientific innovation that introduces altered life forms into human environments, there are complex ethical, ecological, and health-related risks. The promise of progress must be balanced with a deep consideration of what could go wrong, especially when the consequences may stretch far beyond laboratory walls. One of the most immediate and pressing concerns is the possibility of accidental release. The mosquitoes used in these trials have been engineered to carry a live, genetically modified malaria-causing parasite. Weakened so it cannot cause full-blown infection, but still potent enough to prompt an immune response. This is effective in a highly controlled environment, where participants have given informed consent and researchers carefully monitor every aspect of the trial. However, nature is not a lab, and it is not immune to human error. If any of these genetically altered insects were to escape containment, they could potentially interact with wild mosquito populations. Once introduced into the ecosystem, it would be virtually impossible to recall or neutralize them. The long-term ecological consequences of such an event are unknown. There is also the question of how these mosquitoes might influence native species. Altered traits might spread through breeding with wild mosquitoes, potentially creating hybrids that carry unintended characteristics. Even if the original modification is designed to be harmless or beneficial, natural selection and mutation could alter its impact over time. An ecosystem is a delicate and intricate network of interdependent life forms, Changing the behavior, lifespan, or biology of one species can cause ripple effects through the food chain, possibly affecting birds, amphibians, and even plant life that depends on insects for pollination. At this stage, no one can confidently predict how a genetically modified mosquito might reshape the environments it enters. Ethical issues also arise when considering the implications for human populations. One of the foundational principles of modern medicine is informed consent the right of individuals to understand and agree to what is being introduced into their bodies. Using mosquitoes as a delivery mechanism blurs that line considerably. What happens if these mosquitoes, modified or otherwise, begin to interact with people who have not agreed to participate in any medical experiment? Even with the best intentions, unintentionally exposing communities to altered organisms, especially those carrying live parasites, crosses into ethically grey territory. There is also the issue of public perception and trust. The use of genetically modified mosquitoes could add a new layer of suspicion, especially in communities that are historically cautious of medical experimentation. If people begin to feel they are being experimented on without consent, or if they believe they are being exposed to altered organisms against their will, it could undermine decades of work in public health. Trust, once broken, is extremely difficult to rebuild. Another long-term concern is the possibility of unforeseen health effects. While the parasites being delivered are intentionally weakened and monitored for safety, the human body is a complex system and its interactions with live organisms, even in altered forms, can lead to unpredictable outcomes. Immunological reactions may differ from person to person. Some individuals might respond well, gaining protection as intended, while others could suffer side effects not yet understood. Allergic responses, chronic inflammation or autoimmune complications could emerge months or years later, long after the initial exposure. At this point, 
with limited sample sizes and short observation periods, the full scope of potential outcomes remains unknown. There is also the broader philosophical debate about how far science should go in re-engineering nature to serve human purposes. While innovation is essential and life-saving breakthroughs often require bold ideas, the line between advancement and overreach is not always clear. Using mosquitoes as flying medical tools raises questions about whether scientists are moving too quickly without fully considering the broader consequences. Just because a method is effective in a controlled trial does not automatically mean it should be scaled up for global use. Caution must prevail alongside creativity. Financial inequality is another aspect worth examining. The development and deployment of genetically modified mosquitoes are expensive and require sophisticated infrastructure. In regions where malaria is most prevalent, many of which are in low-income countries, there may not be adequate systems to monitor and control these technologies responsibly. Introducing genetically modified organisms into areas without sufficient regulation, healthcare access, or public education could create unequal risks. Vulnerable populations might be disproportionately affected by side effects or environmental changes without the resources to respond appropriately. Furthermore, legal frameworks surrounding biotechnology have yet to catch up with these advancements. If something goes wrong, whether it be an unintended release, an adverse health reaction, or environmental disruption, who would be held accountable? Are the developers, researchers, and organizations behind these trials prepared to take responsibility? More importantly, are current laws and global agreements sufficient to manage such scenarios? These are critical questions that must be addressed before the technology advances beyond its experimental phase. Despite the promise of this innovative delivery system, it is clear that serious ethical, environmental and societal considerations must be part of the conversation. Scientists, policymakers, ethicists and community leaders need to engage in open dialogue to ensure that the pursuit of progress does not come at the cost of safety, trust or ecological balance. Every medical breakthrough carries risk, but those risks must be understood, managed and accepted by those most affected. As of right now, the use of genetically modified mosquitoes in a medical delivery setting represents a powerful example of modern scientific potential. It offers a glimpse into a future where diseases like malaria may be far more preventable than they are today. However, it also serves as a reminder that the tools of progress must be handled with wisdom, restraint and humility. Before these small flying syringes are released on a larger scale, the world must ensure that the long-term impact on people, communities and nature is thoroughly considered and responsibly addressed.